question here asks us to find the eigenvalues and correspondent eigenvectors of the matrix A. And we do that as typical by our definition. We need to find the determinant of this. So if we do a subtraction of lambda i, what we end up with So this we need to find the determinant of. So we can just change this to vertical brackets. So that's going to begin with, let's say we'll go across the top row. That'd be 2 minus lambda multiplied by the determinant of the minor matrix to this. And the minor matrix, if we just highlight it, is if we draw a line across like this, the minor matrix is this here. So I'll just get rid of that a second and carry on. The next uh, element across is the one. To find the minor of this, we draw lines across and the remaining elements make up the minor matrix. But bear in mind that as we move across, we have elements that are positive, negative, and positive. So this is a positive one, but it's going to go in as a negative one. Finally, we have a negative three, so we're going to add a negative three, so we may as well just write negative three. We're going to find the determinant of the uh, minor matrix here. So it's going to be uh, two minus lambda, and then we're going to open a bracket to signify the multiplication. And we have two minus lambda. So it's the diagonal like this. Multiplied negative three, negative lambda. And that's going to be plus four. And the reason is we're going to take away the multiplication of these two. These two are a negative four, and we're going to subtract a negative number to make it positive plus. And as we can see from the multiplication of all these others, that's going to be zero. Take away zero, so that's going to be nothing. You can say take away zero. That's going to be zero. That's going to be zero. Again, we're going to add nothing. So in total, this is going to boil down. If we expand what's on the inside there, If we tidy that up, so it's equal to zero. And when something's, we want to solve this, something's equal to zero, we want to factorize. We want three things multiplied together. So if we factorize that quadratic. Now, when is this equal to zero? We have lambda values of uh, whatever makes those brackets equal to zero. So two minus two, and negative two plus two, and one minus one. Um, so those are the eigenvalues. Let's do the negative two. So in this case, we, we have a definition that A multiplied by a particular vector is equal to a scalar of that vector. Okay, it's unchanged, but potentially scaled. That's the definition of an eigenvector. It's a solution to this question. Um, in this case, you have to find a column vector X, which is unknown, X, Y, Z, that satisfies the equation where lambda, uh, what have written it, equals uh, negative two, okay? So putting that into our equation, we've got our original matrix A, which is, um, that was the original, yep, just double checking. And that's gonna be multiplied by X, which at the moment is unknown, call it X, Y, Z. And we have our eigenvalue multiplied by that same vector, X, Y, Z. This is sometimes useful. Um, the other form that you may write it in is where we have a minus lambda i multiplied by some vector equals zero. In some cases, um, and you know, you could experiment with this, but in some cases, this is going to lead some more technically difficult ways of solving. So you probably want to consider the idea of using the other definition here. Um, we're going to explore that um, in more detail, uh, but not for this course. Okay, so what does this lead to? 
This leads to a set of equations, right? So we've got a three by three multiplied by a three by one, which ultimately is going to lead to a three by one. And that three by one is going to be a set of equations. And we're looking to satisfy them or come up with a logical relationships between the two. Um, so if we equate the middle elements, this will lead to, we rearrange this, the fact that Z on its own is equal to negative four Y. So here you have a free choice of one variable, right? Because there's so many numbers that could, as long as it follows this relationship, you could choose any non-zero value for y or z, and then you can evaluate the other variables. So the best thing to do is to just let y equal one. And in the case that y equals one, multiply that by negative four, we get that z equals negative four. So this is one possibility now based on the logic of that middle statement. And we're gonna to have to make that consistent with the rest. So let's equate the top two. That's the top here, okay. The top two are going to be, where are they? So 2x plus y minus 3z equals negative 2x. And what we do know is that y equals 1 and that z equals negative 4. So once we put those into the equation, we end up with, we know that y is equal to 1 and that through, and z is equal to uh, negative 4, so we have negative 12, which equals negative 13, leading us to conclude that x is equal to negative 13 over 4. Now, that's not a nice whole number, I would definitely avoid decimals at this stage, and not the, not the best to use. Okay, um, what does that show us? Well, our eigenvalue relationship is now set up. In the case that y equals 1 and z equals negative 4, we have x is um, negative 13 over 4. So when lambda equals negative 2, the eigenvector 2 is equal to, and we can repeat that. Okay, so we've got lambda 1 equals 1. If we found that it was 1, it's using memory. Oh no, it's 2. It's 2, but we may as well go for 1 now because 1 was the other one. Let's use, let's make it lambda 3, why not? <laughs> so lambda 1, um, lambda 3 rather, in the eigenvalue of 1, gives us another setup which is... Okay, so if we equate the middle items again, what we end up with is 2y. So this is where we've, we've multiplied these two together. So you appreciate that this would be 2y plus z. Uh, so we have 2y plus z equal to y. And under this, we can rearrange and come to the conclusion that y is equal to negative z. Again, we can choose any element here. So let's let the negative one equal number one. It's typically what I do. So if z equals one, we conclude that y equals negative one. So we're equating the top elements of the equation now and remembering our substitution the top elements would be 2x plus y minus 3z equals x and we're going to put in what we know um, x is equal to 1 plus 3 that's 4 okay so after the substitution x equals 4 so I'll just pair them with boxes so you can see those are our three elements of um, the relationship. So we can say lambda three equals one and the corresponding eigenvector three is equal to um, the relationship that we have here. So Z being one, um, then negative one, that's what we found there for Y and X being four. So that's the eigenvalue and eigenvector pair. Um, we'll do the same for the last one, which is lambda 1. I don't know why I've done it in this strange order. Um, I think it's 2. I'm just going to double check. Yep. So lambda 2 is, lambda 1 is 2. And we have that same equation again. So the 
So what we're going to do here is we're going to equate the middle two elements. So we're going to get 2y uh, plus z equals 2y, which will lead to the logical conclusion that z is equal to 0. And if z equals 0, it implies that y also equals 0 under this Interesting, this calculation will differ from the other two eigenvalues that we calculated in, in that these two equations give you that y equals 0 and z equals 0. This means that there is no choice of values. We're going to then equate the top row, which is 2x plus y minus 3z equals 2x. Um, we can see the 2x on both sides y minus 3z equals 0 and therefore it leads to y equals 3z <laughs> again and this also implies again that y equals 0 and z equals 0. So the variable x appears in no equation okay so you can take any non-zero value remember that rule one is the simplest value that could be uh, used so let's just take x equal to 1. And in this case, we have um, an eigenvalue that respond, well, an eigenvalue 1, I think we were going for, of 2, which is going to correspond to an eigenvector um, 1 of uh, where x, we chose it to be 1, and y and z were both 0. Okay. A 3x3 three three matrix will always have at least one real eigenvalue, since a cubic equation always has at least one real solution. If you want to support this channel, head on over to Patreon. You can get extra resources and a free gift with every sub. <laughs>